Next, uh, next speaker is Ming Liu from uh, Synap, Shanghai Synchrotron Radiation Facility. Ming Liu is Associate Professor in the Electronics Group, Division of Beam Instrumentation and Control Technology. The title of his talk is Design and Prototyping of a New Synchronization System with Stability at Femtosecond. Okay, uh, thanks for introduction. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I will share some in development uh, experience of a new synchrotron a synchronization system with stability at a femtosecond. Uh, the presentation includes three parts, system design, preliminary result, and uh, future plan. Mm, first, uh, we have 10 years uh, development history of uh, e electronic timing system at a Shanghai Synchrotron Radiation Facility since 2007. We complete the development of version one and uh, version two uh, hardware modules and uh, apply the event timing system in, in Puhang Light Source uh, in Korea and uh, Super KKB in Japan and uh, uh, Sirius Light Source in Brazil. Uh, because of various uh, noises and uh, ripple and uh, uh, interference and uh, um, <coughs> the development of the electronic timing system has encountered its bottleneck. So the performance, the jitter reaches 6 picosecond, uh, it's the RMF value. And the phase shift reaches 35 picosecond per degree centigrade. So uh, that's the uh, uh, bottleneck of electronic timing system. Uh, so we began to develop a new system to achieve a better performance. Uh, the goal of the new system uh, is uh, as follows. The short-term jitter of the transmitted RF signal is about 10 femtosecond RMS value, and the long-term drift is 40 femtosecond. Uh, the feature of the system is a very fine phase delay is detected based on the theory of Michelson interference, and the, the RF reference is recovered from fiber link, not to rely on low level RF. It's a full uh, fiber optic uh, network. There's no free air path. And the fan out uh, distribute uh, RF reference to devices around the big facility. Uh, traditional event timing system is integrated to improve the stability. Mm. This is the basic structure of the system. Uh, <coughs> the RF reference is, modul is modulated in the laser carrier. This is a continuous wave laser with natural line widths and uh, low temperature drift. It provides a, a carrier signal. Mm. This is in the transmitter. Uh, and the phase detection and the phase compensation are completed in the receiver. The phase drift is detected in a homemade electronics based on the interference theory. And the phase compensation completed by the optical delay modules according to PID algorithm. And we have homemade electronics uh, test platform. Um, this is the laser. It's a continuous wave DFB fiber laser. has a wide, laser, uh, wide line width of so, uh, kilohertz. And the uh, wavelength is about 1,560 nanometer. Uh, because the change of uh, ambient temperature brings the low drift of the laser frequency. 
the slow drift can be tens of megahertz per degree centigrade. So the output of the laser is locked to, locked to achieve a very high stability over long term. Uh, this is uh, the optical part structure of the system. It's based on the theory of uh, Michelson interference. Um, the RF reference is modulated to the laser carrier, and the signal is divided here. Uh, this is one arm of the Michelson interferometer. The frequency of the signal, transmitted signal carrier is uh, shifted by tens of megahertz. This is the other arm of the uh, Michelson uh, interferometer. The bit, the bit frequency signal is uh, detected here. So we can get a phase drift of the reference. Then we have a PID controller to drive the optical delay modules to compensate the phase drift. Then we have uh, uh, recovered the uh, very stable reference signal. The optic network can provide terahertz bandwidth, low attenuation, and uh, electric isolation. Since the carrier phase in terahertz converts to bit frequency phase in megahertz, so the uh, detection accuracy is improved by six orders of magnitude. Uh, ordinary single-mode fiber, but not uh, polarity-maintained fiber, is utilized to reduce the cost. Um, these are our uh, hardware modules. The transmitter modulate RF reference. The receiver, at the receiver, both the detection and the compensation at the receiver. And hardware-based PID algorithm allocate uh, delay amounts to two delay modules. One is for uh, cost adjustment, the other is for the fine adjustment. RF signal conditioning and uh, amplification. And the fan out module uh, expands the uh, signal channels. Uh, this is a simplified uh, structure of how to detect and compensate uh, phase drift. Uh, after the optical electric uh, uh, conversion of the bit uh, frequency signal, uh, we can um, detect the phase delay of the transmitted signal. And uh, uh, each fiber used in this system will be tested before use to obtain the dispersion parameter. and. Uh, uh, feed forward compensation is applied here to correct uh, the uh, group delay fluctuations effect. And uh, then we compare the phase of the uh, RF reference before and after the compensation. The difference value is the quantity to control in the PID controller. <coughs> So the PID controller can guarantee accurate output to the executives, uh, executive devices. Uh, the optic delay line is for the cost adjustment. The fiber stretcher is for the uh, fine adjustment. This is a homemade electronic to uh, detect uh, the phase. Um, this is the we still have time. Mm. This is a test bench. Um, uh, the three uh, images uh, on the top is uh, from the simulation, and the three images uh, on the bottom is uh, from the test. Mm. We can see the results agree with the simulation. The recovered RF signal is locked to the original RF signal at the transmitter. Uh, and the bit frequency signal was observed uh, in the time domain and uh, the frequency domain. Uh, 
These are the result uh, without compensation. Uh, the phase drift of optical modules due to ambient uh, temperature change, uh, including laser, analog modulator, fiber coupler, and uh, uh, photodiode, and, but uh, there is no long fiber here. We can see the phase drift is about 10 picosecond per degree centigrade. Uh, this is, uh, these are the uh, phase drift of uh, optical module due to ambient temperature change with a fiber of two kilometer. Uh, we can see it brings the phase drift about uh, 150 picosecond per degree centigrade. Mm. This is the preliminary result uh, uh, with the compensation. Uh, Software-based feedback scheme express the phase drift to around uh, 800 femtosecond. Uh, here only cost delay line was utilized. Uh, we use uh, two kilometer fiber here. Uh, this is our future plan. We will integrate the event timing system to the new system uh, by the uh, wavelength division multiplex. The timing events are transmitted along the same fiber, and the timing events could be stabilized uh, against uh, temperature change. Uh, this is the integrated system structure. Mm, the R reference is also modulated to the continuous wave laser carrier, and uh, the reputation rate signal is for triggering the timing sequence. The generator transmits modulated RF reference and event stream through one fiber. Uh, the fan out distributes RF reference and uh, event stream and compensate uh, phase drift of uplink. The event receiver compensate uh, uh, phase drift of uplink and uh, recovers the electric RF reference and, uh, and the event stream. Uh, we have EVR modules in micro TCA chassis output uh, stabilized uh, clocks and the triggers. Oh, thank you. That's my presentation. Um, when you're saying you're um, doing an event distribution system, what kind of bandwidth do you have in mind for the new system? So how many events in, in terms of bandwidth, will you be able to put through? Mm, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, you, for about the event timing system? Yes. Um, the events, I mean, you're carrying a certain amount of data over a clock transmission network. So how much data are you planning to carry over this line? Mm, event timing system transmit uh, uh, event code. Yes, but um, what's the bandwidth that you will be able to put through that um, link? That's what I'm interested in. Like, uh, are you going for one gigabit of event code that you can transmit, or what is the rate that you are intending? Uh, it depends on the uh, event clock. Uh, in our case, the event clock is uh, about around uh, 100 megahertz. Okay, thank you. That's what I wanted to know. Thank you. Thank you. A uh, similar timing stabilization scheme was uh, done at LCLS at Slack, designed by Ralph Wilcox from Berkeley. What we discovered, though, was that the fiber is stabilized at the optical wavelength, but the phase velocity of the modulated signal is different and therefore not stabilized to the femtosecond stability of the optical wavelength. So sub picosecond stability is achieved but one can never achieve femtosecond stability as you would hope for in this case. 
The difference being, again, you stabilize it at the optical wavelength, but the signal of interest is, has a different phase velocity, the RF and the timing signals. Comment really, not uh, a question. Yeah, okay. Thank you for your comment. Yeah. yeah, thank you for that. I think we have to switch to the next speaker. Thanks again.